Welcome to the Rayob Program's Hotograph Options, Vectors, Shears, and Helicity tab. The following examples are only available with the optional Hotograph and Interactive module. For this video, we're starting with the standard SKU-T diagram with embedded mini Hotograph. And note just below the mini Hoto is the station elevation value. Remember this as it will be mentioned later. So, first we'll click on the mini hotograph to expand it into its full screen display. And here we have the standard hotograph view. Now we'll call up the hotograph options panel by going to the options menu, then diagram options, and then select the vectors, shears, and helicity tab, where all options are currently turned off. We'll first demonstrate the ground relative wind vectors. These vectors are drawn in a gray color and they originate from the hotograph's origin. If you alter one of the winds, you can see the altered wind vector plotted in red at the right side of the screen. And when you release the mouse, the red wind vector plot changes to blue, and the respective ground relative wind is redrawn to the new hotograph wind value. Now we'll use the Restore menu option to return the hotograph to its original diagram. OK, we'll right-click the mouse to recall the Options panel. And we'll first deactivate the ground relative vectors. And now turn on the storm relative wind vectors. These vectors are drawn in purple. But something is missing, and it's the storm motion vector. So we'll next select the storm motion tab, and then activate the plot storm motion vector option and apply it. Now it makes more sense, as we can see that the storm relative vectors originate from the storm vector's arrowhead instead of the diagram origin. And when you click and drag the storm motion vector, and then release the mouse, the storm relative vectors are immediately redrawn. Note that we have this vector toggle option, which lets us better see the differences between the ground relative and storm relative displays. So, we'll give it a click, and we can now see the storm relative winds printed in a purple color. And we can also see the storm relative winds plotted with purple vectors. And we'll toggle these a few more times for a better perspective. And now let's set the toggle to the ground relative wind setting. Notice the wind at the 6 kilometer height is 50 knots, which is the same as the last wind on the hotograph. And when we again toggle the winds to show the storm relative vectors, that 6 kilometer wind has changed to a purple color. And it is the same vector as drawn as the last of the storm relative vectors. OK, let's again recall the options panel and turn off the storm relative winds. Then select both the Corfidi upshear and downshear vectors. The upshear vector is drawn in cyan and the downshear vector is drawn in blue, and both are labeled below the diagram. These are different than the storm motion vectors, which are available on the storm motion tab, in that the Corfidi vectors apply to MSC systems, or mesoscale convective systems, where the upshear vector is an estimate of net storm motion for a back-building mesoscale system, and the downshear vector is an estimate of net storm motion for a forward-propagating mesoscale system. And like the other storm motion vectors, the Corfidi vectors also change with altered hotograph winds. But note that the Corfidi vector arrowheads cannot be directly altered like the traditional storm motion vector. So we'll now restore the winds and recall the options panel. OK, let's turn off the Corfidi vectors and activate the Display Shear Data option and apply it. Note that we now have a shear table title and headers but no data. That's because we still need to select the shear layers to be displayed. To do this, we'll click this parameter display selector. And we see already selected the station elevation, which we initially saw on the skew t diagram at the beginning of this video, but it is not used for this table. Since the instructions say that we can select up to three shear layers for display, we'll scroll down and select the shear number one, shear number two, and shear number three parameters. And notice the x kilometer indicators after the shear text. 
The X indicates a variable, which can be edited. We can edit each shear value just by checking this Edit Units box, and alter the depth as desired. But we'll just leave this setting as is for now. So now we'll click the OK button, and again the Apply button. And now we have a shear table full of values. And there's much more shear data available. To see it, we'll first close the Options panel, then select the Listings menu option, and then click on the Storm Table tab. Here we not only see shear data, but also mean wind data, helicity data, and cape data. And speaking of helicity data, let's get back to the hodograph diagram and recall the Options panel. First, we'll turn off the shear table display. Then select the 0 to 3 kilometer helicity option with an interval of 100 units and apply it. The helicity contours are drawn in a tan color and its depth is printed in the diagram's upper right corner. It's important to note that the tip of the storm motion vector points to the current helicity value. For example, we are using the 0 to 3 kilometer helicity contour depth and the parameter listing for the storm relative 3 km helicity indicates a value of 305. We can see that the storm motion arrowhead is also at the 305 value. And when we click and drag the storm motion vector, the helicity values change as the arrowhead moves. And when we stop the changes, the helicity value again reflects the storm motion vector location. Now, let's reset the diagram and recall the Options panel. Let's try changing the helicity depths to the 2 km option, and then the 1 km option. And you can see a summary of the three helicity depth options here at the bottom of the parameter listing. Each represents where the storm motion vector is pointing to. You may ask which helicity depth is best, well, this is a personal preference and requires experience when selecting different depths for different storm types. However, there is another option, and we'll recall the Options panel to see it. This other option is the Effective Storm Relative Helicity option, or ESRH for short. So, let's give it a try. When first selected, it displays a program configuration notice which says ESRH calculations must first be configured using the program configuration options. It also says that using this option requires much more computer processing time and will slow RayOps performance. So we'll click the OK button and now see the Algorithm Options tab of the Program Configuration Options panels. And here is the Effective Storm Relative Helicity option. This ESRH option can only be set here because it is a global setting affecting the calculation of all soundings processed. So we'll go ahead and select this option, but remember, its use can cause Rayab to add hundreds of thousands of extra calculations for each sounding processed. When active, Rayab scans the entire sounding by lifting every millibar parcel while calculating cape values to find the one layer where positive cape values are greater than or equal to 100 and negative cape values, or sin, are also greater than minus 250. Its ultimate purpose is to find the layer that best discriminates between significant tornadic and non-tornadic supercells. So, now watch what happens when we click the OK button. A special calculation panel appears to display the extra processing time needed for this option. And when done, we'll apply this change. At first, it looks like nothing changed. Well, that's almost true. Look at the very bottom of the screen where there's a new parameter listed, the effective storm relative helicity value. And it also shows the layer used to calculate the helicity, which is the 0 to 2.9 kilometer layer, which is, by the way, nearly identical to the preset 0 to 3 kilometer layer defined just above. And this is why there was no apparent diagram change. There's just one last item to mention, and that's the three SR values listed here. They are the storm relative mean wind layers, which of course are a function of the storm motion vector. 
Specifically, the SR 9 to 11 kilometer values represents the mean storm relative wind within the 9 to 11 kilometer layer, which is referred to as the anvil level wind. The SR 4 to 6 kilometer value represents the mid level wind layer, and the SR 0 to 2 kilometer value represents the low level wind layer. And that completes the Hodograph Options, Vectors, Shears, and Helicity tab demonstration. Thank you for watching.